欢迎来到下午第二场的这个呃演讲。那在这场演讲，我们是邀请到这个俄罗斯团队，好、哦、有一个研究呃公司叫做 Positive Technology， 呃，那会由他来带来这个关于 SS7 和那个 Diameter Protocol 上面的一些安全问题。在传统我们在电信网络上面，其实存在一些旧的，就是 SS7。造成的一些安全问题。那在新一代的这些电信网络上面，其实还有一些些许的漏洞。让我们掌声欢迎呃，这位呃 ，Sergey p u z a k o v p u z a k o v 好，掌声鼓励一下，谢谢。Hello, Hitcon. Nice to see you. Let me start by introducing、uh, the team members. Uh, who took part in uh, this uh, research? I uh, I'm going to present now. The first uh, person is Sergey Mashukov. Sergey uh, works uh, with uh, diameter protocol. He is good researcher of the diameter protocol from security point of view. Also, Sergey performs uh, security assessments of uh, mobile operators. Of LTE networks, and he is part of the development team of、uh, some security tools. Alexander Negov. Alexander、uh, knows both SS7 and Diameter protocols, and、uh, Alexander has、uh, great experience in、uh, protecting real mobile operators. And I, my name is Sergey Puzankov.、Uh, the sphere of my interest is、uh, SS7. Protocols and、uh, everything what is connected to, with、uh, security in、uh, SS7 networks. So, the subject of、uh, my talk is signal networks.、Uh, a couple of words、uh, about what the signal networks are.、Uh, there are two basic、uh, standards that、uh, mobile operators use.、Uh, To send the different information be between、uh, network elements, the first of them is SS7. SS7 is used in、uh, GSM and UMTS mobile networks. SS7 signaling、uh, is primarily intended to set up and release telephony calls, but、uh, when mobile、uh, telephony appeared, SS7、uh, began to be used uh, for uh, mobility, for roaming, for SMS messages, and other services. Diameter protocol.、Uh, this protocol is、uh, originally an authentication, authorization, and accounting protocol for the computer networks. But、uh, this protocol is、uh, extensible, and、uh, one of the examples is RFC 5516 that uh, allows uh, to use the diameter protocol for mobile applications in、uh, EPC. EPC is a valid packet system, and、uh, this is a core. Uh, co core network of the LT networks.、Uh, I will use uh, the term a message throughout the presentation, and、uh, will I, when, when I say this uh, word, uh, please be aware of、uh, this is、uh, not a SMS message, but、uh, a signal message. Signal message is、uh, like a packet in IP networks. Uh, signal signaling. Uh, Messages、uh, go between network、uh, elements only, not on the user sides. If we look at、uh, the official GSMA statistics,、uh, we can see that、uh, about five、uh, billion subscribers are, are used、uh, three and two、uh, gener generation、uh, mobile networks. And、uh, others、uh, use already 4G. But if、uh, the uh, intruder appears in signal, on signal networks, this intruder is able to perform a lot of attacks on any subscriber on any mobile operator around the world.、Uh, this intruder is able to intercept、uh, private data, SMS, and voice calls. They can track location of subscribers. They can perform denial of service attacks, both on subscribers and the whole network elements.、Uh, these intruders are able to steal money from subscriber accounts, and、uh, they can get access、uh, to even to email, 
to messengers and other applications, uh, taking control over the digital identity of the uh, subscriber, mobile subscriber. But why the signaling is not uh, secure? When SS7 was developed, uh, there were no thoughts about uh, security because it was supposed to use this uh, system in a very trusted environment between a few number of uh, large uh, telephone operators. And uh, moreover, this network is uh, supposed to be fully isolated from the other world. But uh, later, in 19, uh, mobile operators be became uh, widespread. So th there are a huge number of mobile operators nowadays. Uh, nowadays, and uh, moreover, in the early 2000s, one new specification, Sectran, was introduced, and this specification <coughs> allowed sending SS7 messages via IP, IP networks. So, the SS7 stop being isolated, and the number of uh, players is uh, very huge now. They are uh, mobile operators, mobile virtual operators, valued service, service providers, and so on. Uh, diameter protocol uh, could not solve uh, this problem. Diameter brings uh, the same problems, the same threats to the te telecom security. So trust error is over, and now we have this problem. Fortunately, mobile operators are aware of uh, this uh, problem, uh, about, uh, of this uh, security problem. They do a lot to protect their networks. They install signaling firewalls, they install uh, SMS home routing solutions, uh, introduce signaling intrusion detection systems, they configure uh, equipment for the better security, and they perform external security assessments from the uh, other side, from external connections. Uh, so I will use uh, a lot of uh, terms throughout the presentations, throughout this presentation, and uh, I need to <coughs> describe some of them in advance. MSISDN, this is just a telephone number we all use to call our friends. GT, a global title. Global title, this is address of uh, network elements in GSM and UMTS, UMTS networks. G global title has uh, a similar structure to MSISDN. IMSI, International Mobile Sub Subscriber Identity. This is identity of a SIM card. Uh, usually we do not use uh, this identity, but uh, all the network elements use it uh, when uh, they address some particular subscriber. And actually MSSDN and IMSI, these two identities are used and in LTE also. And network elements. STP, signal transfer point. This is a switch of uh, signaling traffic. HLR, home location register. This is just a database of uh, all mobile subscribers uh, with uh, subscriber profiles. Uh, these profiles uh, contain such information as MSSDN, IMSI, number of uh, prohibited and allowed services, and some technical data. The next element, MSC and VLR. This element uh, performs two functions. The first one, MSC, Mobile Switching Center. Uh, this uh, functionality is responsible for voice call uh, switching and uh, SMS switching. And the second one is VLR, Visited Location Register. This is also a database, but uh, this database contains uh, information about active subscribers, subscribers who are under the coverage area of the respective MSC. VLR receives uh, copies of subscriber profiles from the HLR and uh, updates this information with uh, some data from the radio access uh, subsystem, for example, with uh, the current cell identity. SGSN, Servant GPS Support Node. Uh, this uh, element performs uh, the same fu function that MSC and VLR does, but uh, just for IP packet services. And the SMSC or SMS center, this uh, element handles SMS sending and delivery. And uh, 
some identities uh, and uh, nodes in LT networks. EPC, this is a common name of the core, ne core network in the LT network. Uh, it uh, stands for Evolved Packet Core. The next one is Realm. This is a standardized network identity for each, uh, <clears throat> for each operator. It uh, looks like some URL host name. Uh, the two, two parts, uh, two final parts, is uh, standard, 3gppnetwork.org. Uh, they are related to all the networks standardized by the 3gpp association. The next one is MCC with uh, number. MCC, this is mobile country code. And uh, in this example, 466, this is mobile country code of uh, Taiwan. The next one is MNC, mobile network code, uh, with the number. This is uh, some network within th this country. And EP EPC just defines that uh, this is evolved packet core. Host ID. Host ID, this is identity of a particular uh, network element. It has, uh, it uh, adds uh, some identity to the realm. In this example, this is uh, MME01, and uh, this uh, identity, this final identity, uh, usually def defines the type of element with just a number. And nodes, DEA, diameter edge agent. Uh, this node uh, defines also switching of the signal traffic, like uh, STP does for the SS7. HSS, Home Subscriber Server. Uh, this is an uh, evolution of the home uh, location register for the 4G networks. MME, Mobile Management Entity. This node is responsible for mobility management procedures of subscribers in LT networks. And also MME uh, chooses uh, the SGW for data traffic uh, handling. And the S SGW is the next element. SGW handles or processes uh, user data in LT networks. And IMS, IP Multimedia System. Actually, this system uh, does not belong to LT standard. IMS, uh, this is a common standard for voice over IP communications. But LTE often uses uh, this uh, system within uh, the whole uh, ecosystem of the operator uh, to transmit voice calls uh, via L, uh, or over LTE IP networks. Uh, nowadays, uh, there are three actual generations that uh, are still working. The first of them is uh, 2G or networks of the uh, second generation. Usually, this is GSM. Uh, when they, they, these uh, networks appeared, uh, primarily they uh, used for uh, voice calls and the SMS messages. Uh, later, GPRS technology appeared that uh, allows uh, sending a lot of. Uh, IP data traffic cheaper than uh, just uh, was in GSM networks. The third generation network introduces only new radio access system. And the core uh, system, core network, uh, remains the same. 4G networks, or LTE, introduces uh, new both radio and the full core network. Uh, but uh, when uh, LTE networks uh, appeared, they uh, suggested to uh, process only data traffic of subscribers. And later, mobile, uh, uh, yeah, and uh, one more moment. Uh, usually operators uh, use uh, several uh, generation of uh, networks, and HSS in this uh, case covers uh, functionality of the HLR, uh, 
so all the subscribers' data are in HSS. If mobile operator wants uh, to move uh, voice traffic from GSM and UMTS networks uh, to the LT standard, uh, they should implement IMS platform in the in uh, their network. And now, what, what we what we could see usually device mobile device is connected to all the standards to 3G, 4G, and 2G simultaneously. And if a subscriber, or not, not subscriber, but the device uh, loses uh, connection to, for example, to 4G networks, it auto automatically connected to the uh, low gen generation uh, standards, for example, to 3G and uh, 2G. Couple of words about uh, Protocols. SS7. SS7 is a big stack of protocols, but uh, uh, there are three layers that uh, are connected to uh, security on the interconnection. Uh, the lowest layer pr protocol that is used for the international interconnection is SCCP, Signal Connection Control Part. Uh, this protocol is responsible for the routing of signaling messages by global titles. TCAP protocol, the next protocol, is located above the SCCP, and this protocol is responsible to combine uh, single requests and responses into the whole dialogues. And also, uh, TCAP defines a, a context of the upper layer of application. Upper layer application is MAP, or mobile application part. This is a payload that contains operation code and all the parameters like IMS, MSSD, and maybe location information and so on. Diameter, a stack for the diameter protocol. Uh, diameter protocol is uh, initially based on IP protocol. So for the interconnection, the lowest layer that uh, is used for the international interconnection is IP. Then this protocol uses uh, SCTP protocol, stream control transmission protocol, as a uh, protocol of the transport layer, not UDP or TCP. Uh, this protocol, uh, SCTP, uh, provides some functions both from UDP and uh, TCP. And the payload diameter protocol, uh, this protocol contains common code, application, identity, and all the parameters. And uh, of course, signaling uh, security uh, has got uh, its own unique security tools. First of them is a couple, uh, STP and DDA, that makes uh, simple uh, screening on the border. Uh, one more is SMS home routing. This solution uh, is intended to prevent uh, SMS fraud and spam, and also hide IMSI identities. And uh, one more solution is signaling firewall, SS7 or diameter firewalls. This is the most sophisticated, the most smart uh, tool that uh, protects network against a lot of uh, signaling attacks. Some details about uh, these tools. STP and DA. I have mentioned uh, these nodes uh, in, the in my presentation earlier, uh, and I said that uh, these uh, two nodes just processes, uh, pro process signaling traffic, and this is true. But uh, these nodes uh, are usually uh, border points of uh, the network operators. So it is reasonable to bring some security mechanisms into these points. But uh, these points, uh, STP and DA, are able to perform some very, very simple uh, screening, like, uh, for example, block uh, messages by source address, block messages by just operation code, and so on. SMS home routing. Before I explain how it works, I would like to describe SMS delivery process. Initially, SMS center has got an SMS uh, that should be delivered to the subscriber. 
SMS center does not know where this subscriber is located because all subscribers are mobile and the subscriber may be in any place of the world. So, first, SMS center should receive some routing information. It sends send routing info for SM signaling request that comes to the HLR. HLR replies with uh, two, para two parameters, IMC, identity of the subscriber, and address of the current MSC. HLR always know this uh, address. And now SMS center knows where subscriber is located and sends SMS to this particular uh, MSC. After that, MSC delivers uh, this message to the subscriber. When uh, intruder appears uh, on SSL network, they can use uh, this uh, command uh, or this uh, signal request and root info for SM to retrieve uh, confidential subscriber data like IMC and the MSC address. And now SMS home routing. SMS home routing introduces one more network element on the signal network. It calls SMS router. And now send routing info for SM request comes to the STP. What STP should do? STP starts analyzing of uh, this uh, signaling message layer by layer. On the SCP layer, SCP, STP defines that uh, the destination node is HLR. On the TCAP layer, STP defines that uh, this is a request or initiation of the transaction. That means STP should uh, look at the uh, upper layer protocol to define operation code. STP defines that operation is send routing info for SM, and after that, STP changes destination node from the HLR to the SMS router and delivers this message not to the HLR, but to the SMS router. SMS router generates a fake random IMC and sends it in the uh, response, and also it sends its own address instead of MSC's address. After that, SMS center delivers the signal message to the SMS router. After that, SMS router correlates uh, this fake EMC with the uh, original MSSDN and performs one more HLR interrogation process internally in the network. It uh, sends send routing info for SM request to the HLR. HLR replies with uh, correct data. And after that, SMS router is able to deliver this message to the correct MSC. And here we see two different SMS delivery processes. First of them is external, and the second one is fully internal. And now, again, mail factor appears on SSL network. Mail factor sends send routing info for SM request to receive some confidential information. This uh, signal message comes to the SMS router. SMS router uh, replies with fake data. The network is protected. Couple words about uh, firewalls. S7 firewalls usually uh, is implemented in a loop mode. When a signal message, any signal message comes to the STP, STP routes it to the S7 firewall, first of all. S7 firewall starts inspecting on this message layer by layer, correlating uh, data, uh, user data, uh, address data <clears throat> and the SN firewall defines if this message is normal or not. If this message is illegitimate from the SSN firewall point of view, SN firewall just blocks it. Otherwise, SN firewall sends this message back to the STP and STP delivers to the destination node, HLR in this example. Diameter firewall. Uh, this uh, tool usually installed inline. So this is, uh, it becomes a border point instead of DEA. So all the signal messages come to uh, diameter firewall. Diameter firewall uh, inspects this message and if this message is illegitimate, diameter firewall blocks it. Otherwise, it passes this message into the network to DEA and after that, DA routes it to, to any destination node. GSMA organization, this is the association of all the mobile operators in the world. 
they performed, they, they have done the great uh, job. They classified all the potentially uh, dangerous signal messages in two categories. Uh, category zero. Uh, this category consists uh, the list of uh, operations, uh, not, not operations, consists rule, rules of inconsistent messages. But uh, this category is uh, strictly, strictly defined, defined only for diameter protocol. Category one uh, consists the list of uh, operations that are not available on the interconnection. Uh, category two. Uh, this category c c contains the list of uh, operations that are available on the interconnection. But uh, these uh, operations are okay only for inbound, real inbound uh, subscribers. For example, I am subscriber he in Taiwan. If my mobile operator needs to send some signal traffic related to my identity, uh, my mobile operator, home mobile operator, is able to do it. Uh, but this signal traffic should be related to my identity. But if my home operator sends the same operation codes uh, that are related to Taiwanese subscribers, this traffic is illegitimate. And uh, category three, this uh, category is opposite to category two. This uh, category also can, uh, contains the list of uh, operations that are available on the interconnection, but uh, these operations uh, should be should be related on outbound subscribers. And again, one more example. I'm here, Omer. If I perform some uh, maybe calls, or send an SMS, my, uh, not my, but this, the Taiwanese uh, mobile operator should send some signal traffic to my home operator. And this traffic is normal because I'm really located here. But if this Taiwanese operator will send uh, uh, sends this uh, traffic to my Russian operator that is related to subscribers who are home, this traffic is illegitimate. When we performed a lot of uh, signaling security assessments on operators, we mentioned uh, one interesting picture. In uh, 2015, there, we have never met any SS7 firewall. In 2016, about 19 uh, persons of all network uh, has implemented this uh, tool. In 17, 28 persons. In uh, 18, 48 persons. And uh, I think. Uh, by the end of this uh, year, it will be more than half uh, mobile networks protected by uh, signal firewalls. So this uh, <coughs> the penetration rate is uh, growing up. Diameter firewalls. In uh, 2015, of course, we mentioned zero persons diameter firewalls on networks in 2016. Zero, zero, zero. I hope uh, that uh, by the end of this year, we uh, finally face some networks with diameter firewalls. And now I will uh, talk about some cases that are really possible on uh, mobile networks, on signal networks. Uh, <clears throat> The different attacks. And uh, to make this uh, story more interesting, I will use uh, attacks on uh, different protocols. First attack will be on SS7 protocol, the se second attack will be on diameter protocol, and the third attack will be cross protocol attack on both SS7 and diameter. And uh, so, the first intruder, the first thing intruder uh, need is IMSI identity. Uh, this uh, the identity itself is not valuable for, for the intruder, but when intruder knows this information, intruder is able to perform all the 
dangerous attacks like location tracking, SMS interception, and so on. A uh, couple words about uh, uh, TCAP protocol, some details about TCAP protocol. TCAP protocol uh, consists of uh, several blocks. The first block is just a uh, message type, this is mandatory field. The second block is transaction identity, this is also mandatory field. The third block, block is a dialect portion. This is a number of fields and all these block is optional. And this block uh, contains uh, one uh, important uh, field or one important parameter, application context name. This uh, particular parameter defines operation of the upper layer and upper, upper layer is encoded in a component portion. This is a map uh, protocol and uh, this uh, portion, component portion, uh, contains uh, operation code and all the parameters. If we look at uh, application context in uh, more details, we will see the, this is a group of numbers. This is a group of eight numbers. And the four uh, six, the first six numbers are always constant for all the uh, map uh, operations. Only uh, two, two final numbers might be different. And uh, let, let's see what happens if the intruder just changes one of the constant values to some not supported value. And now, intruder appears on SSL network and the intruder sends send routing info for SM signaling request with a malformed application context name. This message comes to the STP and the STP starts the analyzing. On the SCP layer, STP defines that the destination node is uh, HLR. On the TCAP layer, STP faces with uh, malformed application context name. And on this step, STP considers that uh, if the application context is malformed, uh, that means uh, all the message is malformed. And what's the decision? And the decision is send this message into the network, to the destination node. And the destination node should uh, decide what uh, to do with this signal message. STP sends this message not to the SMS router because uh, STP didn't didn't see operation code yet, but to the HLR. And what is interesting, HLR ignores the, this malformed value in the application context name and replies with uh, real data. And now intruder knows IMSI identity of, of uh, our subscriber. And the uh, SMS home router is bypassed. The next uh, thing, what the intruder needs is uh, to define the uh, position of this uh, subscriber. Intruder will use uh, location tracking attack on uh, diameter network. But uh, before I explain how it works, uh, I need to <coughs> mention that uh, this is uh, not GPS position attack. Uh, intruder defines not uh, particular location of the mobile device, but uh, intruder defines only identity of the serving cell. If we look at uh, this map, and uh, this is uh, location somewhere nearby uh, this place, uh, we, we can see that uh, base stations are as near a, as uh, about 50 meters one to other, 100 meters. So if an intruder defines uh, location of the servant base station, intruder is able to define a subscriber location plus minus 100 meters in the city. Uh, cell global identity, this is the identity of the base station. It, it consists of uh, four uh, parameters. First of them, mobile country code. I have mentioned this. This is uh, 
identity of the country. And uh, in this example, 466, this is Taiwan. Mobile, country, uh, mobile network code. This is uh, identity of the operator within the country. Location area code. This is uh, identity of uh, group of cells in, uh, within the operator. And the uh, cell identity itself, this is a point on the map. So, our intruder appears on diameter network now. Intruder sends insert subscriber data request to the network. This uh, message comes to the DEA. DEA wrote this message to the appropriate MA, MME node. And uh, this message insert. It's uh, supposed to perform some active actions uh, on uh, subscriber profiles. But uh, this message contains uh, some flags that uh, <coughs> direct to this message just retrieve information. And in this example, retrieving uh, uh, th this uh, message should retrieve location, in particular, particular identity of the serving cell identity. And uh, MME sends uh, this identity in the response. And now intruder knows location in, uh, this, in this parameter. Actually, intruder can use uh, and, uh, attacks on SSL network to receive location. On SSL network, uh, <coughs> this attack is able via six of uh, signaling messages that are on the list. So, now our intruder knows location of subscriber, but uh, this is not enough for the intruder, and the intruder wants to uh, intercept voice call of the subscriber. So, I'll start from some simple things. Uh, this is a classical uh, man in the middle or voice call interception attack on uh, SS7 networks without uh, any protection tools. First of all, intruder should send insert subscriber data signaling message. Uh, this message addresses subscriber by IMSI identity. And this message uh, contains information uh, about spoofed billing platform. And of course, intruder should spoof uh, address to their own. STP sends this message to the MSC and VLR. Uh, VLR updates information in the pro profile, in subscriber profiles, and sends some positive uh, response. After that, intruder understands that uh, profile is updated and just finalizes the transaction. And now, now intruder should wait for subscriber to call. When subscriber calls, this information, of course, comes to the MSC and VLR, and this node starts charging process. It uh, sends initial DP signaling message to the billing or to charging si on online charging system, but this uh, system has already been spoofed. So this message comes to the intruder's equipment. But intruder does not need to charge this subscriber. Intruder is able to send connect signaling message as a response using some PBX number. PBX is a private branch exchange or a small telephone switch. After that, MSC redirects this call to this number, to this PBX number. And after this, intruder is able to initiate one more voice call from this telephone switch to the B subscriber, to the second subscriber, spoofing number of the calling subscriber. And intruder knows this information from this, from first uh, signal message from initial DP. This uh, signal message contains this information by default. When this uh, signal message uh, comes to the MSC, uh, a new call is initiated to the second subscribers. These two subscribers are able to communicate and moreover, the second subscriber sees the number of the calling subscriber, real number of the subscriber. But all the signaling, not signaling, but all voice traffic 
open voice traffic goes through the intruder's equipment. Uh, now, a couple of words about identities, to, just to describe how uh, protection tools uh, work. Uh, MSAs then and uh, global titles. As I previously said, uh, these uh, two identities uh, have a similar structure. Uh, they consist of uh, three groups of digits. The first uh, group defines country. This is country code. In this example, this is again Taiwan. The second group defines network code within the country. And the third group of digits define, defines uh, subscriber if this is MSSDN or a node if this is a global title. And IMSI. IMSI also consists of three groups of, groups of digits. The first defines a country, this is mobile country code. The second one defines the network within the country, and the th uh, third group of digits defines the subscriber. These two identities could define to the same mobile operator. And when uh, we speak about comparison of the global title and IMSI, we do not compare these uh, identities digit by digit. But first, we define operator for each of identity, and after that, we compare these two operators. Or may maybe one. How it works in uh, real networks. Uh, when a mobile operator receives some signal signaling message, in this example, this is provide subscriber info. This is a well-known signal message for location tracking. Uh, uh, now this message sends, uh, should be sent to the SEN firewall, and the SEN firewall starts the inspection. It uh, looks at the source address and to the subscriber identity. This message comes uh, from Switzerland, and this message is related to a Taiwanese subscriber. These two operators are different. That's why this message should be blocked. How it works against the uh, man in the middle attack? Again, our intruder sends insert subscriber data signaling message to the network. STP receives this message and sends it to the SSN firewall. SSN firewall understands this uh, insert subscriber data. This is again category two signaling message. So it should uh, compare source operator with uh, subscribers operator. Switzerland and Taiwan, two different countries with two different operators. That's why this message should be blocked on the border, and uh, attack is not impossible. One more thing about voice over, over LTE service. Uh, this service uh, involves uh, an IMS system. And now, when uh, one subscriber calls another one, uh, MME uh, controls uh, mobility services of this subscriber, and all the voice traffic goes through IMS system, not through the MSC. And now, even our subscriber is uh, successful in the first step of uh, man in the middle attack, and uh, the profile uh, is updated. All voice uh, traffic is uh, handled by MME and IMS. So this uh, attack does not influence on uh, subscriber uh, traffic. So voice over LTE solution indirectly works against uh, malefactors. So it indirectly protects the network against the voice call interception attacks. And now, our very experienced uh, intruder appears on both SS7 and diameter networks. And now this intruder should uh, <coughs> perform man in the middle or voice call interception attack. First, intruder should do. Intruder should suppress voice over LTE services. Intruder sends cancel location request uh, using subscribers IMSI. 
This uh, request comes to the MME, and MME thinks that uh, this subscriber goes somewhere abroad, and he is not here anymore. MME sends some positive response and uh, erases profile of the subscribers in the database. After that, subscriber automatically switched to the lower generation uh, system to 2G and 3G that are based on the SS7. Couple, more couple of words about TCAP protocol. I have already showed uh, this uh, picture with uh, TCAP structure. Uh, and this is, uh, uh, this is the typical, the most typical uh, structure of uh, signaling message of MAP protocol. Uh, <clears throat> But uh, there is one uh, possibility of the standard that the component portion could uh, contain more than one component, more than one operations. But this is a very untypical situation. That's why all, uh, maybe not all, but uh, a lot of uh, SS7 uh, firewalls checks only the first component. And uh, they... Uh, checks only the identity in the first component of if they uh, see double map components. And they consider that the second component is just the long tail of the first one. And now, how it works in real life. Now intruder sends these kind of uh, signaling messages with double map components. The first component is insert subscriber data. And the second uh, component is delete subscriber data. But insert subscriber data does not contain subscriber identities at all. Uh, this is okay as per the standard. STP sends this message to the SSA on firewall. SSA on firewall inspects only the first component. It finds uh, it is uh, without subscriber identities, so no suspicious. It sends the message back to the STP, and the STP delivers this message to the uh, destination MSC. From the MSC's point of view, this uh, combination of operation delete and insert simultaneously some information is uh, is quite weird. Uh, so MSC replies with error. It looks like a normal situation, but this uh, error goes in TCAP continue signaling message, and this. Uh, combination, continue and error, means something like that. I don't understand you, please repeat your request within the same transaction. And now, intruder sends one more signaling message within the same transaction. And now, intruder sends two insert subscriber data components. First, insert, insert, insert subscriber data is uh, without subscriber identities. And the second one, uh, is uh, with uh, subscriber identity and with the spoofed billing platform. Again, STP sends this message to the SS7 firewall. SS7 firewall inspects only the first component and sends this message into the network. MSC now replies with OK for the first component and OK for the second component. So, profile is updated. Intruder finalizes the transaction and waits uh, for subscriber to call. And now we, we, know, we, we know when subscriber calls, MSC sends initial DP request to the spoofed billing platform to the intruder's equipment. Intruder sends connect with uh, PBX number. Calls are directed to the PBX. Intruder initiates one more call and subscribers are able to communicate each other. But all the traffic goes uh, through the subscriber PBX. Uh, information about uh, vulnerabilities I described here uh, uh, about SS7 networks uh, was uh, sent to the GSMI Coordinated Vulnerability Program. One of them is registered with uh, identity, but uh, information about uh, both these, uh, these vulnerabilities uh, uh, was uh, comes into the new 
version of uh, security guidelines uh, that is effective uh, from the May this year. And uh, <clears throat> for mobile operators, for signal networks, there are three main <clears throat> problems. They are architecture flaws, configuration mistakes of the equipment, and uh, software bugs. And uh, what we see, what we can see right now, that uh, operators uh, have learned uh, to withstand uh, such issues uh, as architecture flaws and configuration mistakes. But uh, software bugs are the big problem for mobile operators uh, still. And uh, my message to mobile operators is as follows. First of all, check your security tools if uh, it exists as soon as new vulnerability is reported. Use uh, intrusion detection systems or uh, security monitoring of your premises along with uh, SSA and diameter firewalls. This could uh, help you to uh, detect new threats and, uh, for example, block uh, hostile uh, source at all. And can configure uh, equipment, uh, security equipment carefully uh, to block the wide range of attacks. And if uh, these uh, three easy or simple steps uh, doing in a loop, uh, the network uh, perimeter will be uh, more safe. That's all. Thank you for your attention. Hey,好,各位时间有点超过哦,呃,我们开放几个问题给各位发挥,有没有人有问题要问? 好,来请说。你你桌上,你用桌上的那个,那个,对。Hello, yeah, yeah. I'm going to ask a question. Just, you just told the, uh, the hacker need to do everything before they get in the STP. So, I, my question is, how can... Uh, Hacker get get in the STP uh, device. Yes. Ah. Thank you. First of all, first of all, hacker should uh, get access to the SS7 at any mobile operator. Maybe even not mobile operator, but value added service, uh, service uh, provider or uh, any other company uh, that has access to the SS7. SS7. This is a global network. And uh, when intruder uh, got access to any SS7 connection at any place, for example, in Africa, intruder is able to attack any operator around the world. So intruder sends uh, the signal message. Uh, uh, the first signal message may be addressed uh, by, uh, by the MSSDN number, just by telephone number. So the telephone number, this is the uh, first thing intruder uh, needs to improve uh, attacks uh, more and more. Okay, thank you. Okay, you're for. Uh, hi. As a mobile subscriber, is there anything for myself like? Uh, anything which could be installed on my cell phone in order to enrich the security of the LTE communication, uh, not just the voice communication. Uh, uh, are there any uh, enforcement for the video communication as well? Unfortunately, no. Uh, this is uh, fully in the responsibility of the mobile operator. I'm thinking about whether there could be any uh, client-side encryption, which even though somebody, some bad guys have been hijacking or I'm in the middle to, to eavesdrop my communication, but they just got a bunch of garbage. Is it possible? Um, doing encryption? Yeah. I, I think no, because 
intruder plays a role of a, of a legal, some, some legal node on SSA or diameter network. So even if uh, the traffic is encrypted on the path, uh, this uh, traffic uh, should be decrypted on the destination node, or maybe on the STP on the border of the operator where uh, this intruder is uh, connected. Okay, we will give you a question. I I Okay, so, so I heard you mention uh, VOLTE um, the, as well as maybe VO Wi-Fi protocol. So um, I heard uh, there is a SIP layer, SIP, uh, VOIP protocol layer inside. So um, in the pr presentation, is, is there any authentication in the SIP layer in addition to the original uh, network level like uh, MS, ISDN, I, this authentication? Uh, <clears throat> yeah, but uh, SIP, it, uh, it is out the scope of this presentation. SIP, oh. SIP, SIP uh, works uh, between, uh, b between uh, operators to provide uh, voice traffic. And again, uh, this intruder could, uh, for example, uh, uh, lease some uh, resources on uh, some uh, legal uh, legal open P PBX, and they will have uh, access uh, via SIP signaling, and uh, they will receive real and uh, receive and send uh, real voice traffic. Oh, okay, so, so SIP is the dial-in protocol, and the inside is still this SS7 diameter protocol. Uh, no, SIP not inside, SIP is uh, out of uh, SS7 and diameter. Okay, so, so in the Attack mentioned your presentation is uh, doesn't need to bypass the SIP authentication. The attacker has no, nothing to do with SIP. If they want to intercept the VOLTE uh, call. Okay, okay, okay. If uh, if uh, intruder uses uh, just SIP, not uh, mm, not not usual telephone communications, but uh, if the, if uh, subscribers use. Uh, SIP client on the mobile phone. Uh, this uh, this is out of scope of this presentation, and it should be some another attack on the SIP protocol. Yeah. Okay, so so VOLT itself does not use SIP. Uh, excuse me, please please re repeat. So so the VOLT and the VO Wi-Fi uh, voice call is there's no SIP involved in this uh, call? They might uh, involve SIP, but uh, for the inter-operator interconnection. And th oh, this is, okay. this is uh, transparent for, for, for the intruder. Not, not between this uh, device uh, to the base station. There's no SIP protocol. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay. I, I mean no, not this, yeah. Okay, thank you. <coughs> 好, 那我们再次掌声。谢谢这位 speaker, 谢谢。Thank you.